What is coastal and marine spatial planning? There's a lot of talk among politicians and scientists about the use of coastal and marine spatial planning as a new way for Americans to manage the different uses of our oceans and coasts. In 2010, President Obama said that coastal and marine spatial planning will play a central role in our nation's new ocean policy. And states like Rhode Island, California, Massachusetts, Florida, and Oregon have already begun the process of incorporating CMSP into their ocean resource management plans. But what is coastal and marine spatial planning? What can it do? Will it just be more rules and regulations to follow? Will it change how I use the ocean? Will it make certain areas off limits? Will I have to do anything? Coastal and marine spatial planning is simply a process planners will use to make better decisions about ocean uses. Without CMSP, it can be challenging for planners to make decisions about ocean uses, like where to put drilling rigs or where to focus fishing activity, because they aren't able to consider all the other uses of the ocean. Marine spatial planning provides decision makers with accurate information and maps about the geography, environmental characteristics, and current uses of the ocean. This information will help these decision makers better plan for increased existing uses and for new uses. Under the current sector-by-sector -sector or use-by-use -use approach, each use of the ocean is planned for under different laws and through different government agencies. Because of the lack of coordination between these laws and agencies, decisions made for one ocean use can end up conflicting with another use. If nothing is done, these conflicts are set to increase as the need for ocean space grows. However, coastal and marine spatial planning allows planners to consider many different uses of the ocean at once, allowing for better decisions about ocean uses and reducing potential conflicts. The goal is avoiding conflicts. What is a conflict? Any use of the ocean which potentially disrupts any other use of the ocean is a conflict. For example, citing wind turbines in areas heavily used by fishermen creates a conflict. Citing marine protected zones in important fishing areas creates a conflict. And running shipping lanes through areas with offshore oil rigs creates a conflict. By reducing conflicts, the number of uses and users of the ocean will be able to grow while still protecting the sensitive and valuable environmental characteristics of the ocean, allowing compatible uses to share ocean space, and streamlining permits and paperwork. What will coastal and marine spatial planning do? How does CMSP reduce conflicts? Seven goals for CMSP are included in our new National Ocean Plan. It's hoped that CMSP will support sustainable, safe, secure, efficient, and productive uses of the ocean, protect, maintain, and restore ocean resources and ensure resilient ecosystems, provide for and maintain public access to the ocean and coasts, promote compatibility among ocean uses and reduce conflicts, improve regulatory decision-making, increase certainty and predictability in planning for and investing in ocean uses, and enhance interagency, intergovernmental, and intercontinental communication and collaboration. Here's an illustration to show how marine spatial planning works. Imagine you're moving furniture into a new bedroom. The room is empty except for a radiator in one corner, two doors, and some wall jacks. All this empty space, you could put your furniture anywhere. However, when you stop and think about how you will use your room, you realize you don't have as many options as you first thought. You don't want to put furniture in the walkway between the two doors. You can't put anything right next to the radiator. You'll need to put the TV near the cable jack, so you can't put your bed there. You want to position your bed to take advantage of the morning sunlight. Pretty soon you've got a map showing how your room will be used. Arranging your furniture based on this map will ensure that your room will be comfortable from the start. This is exactly how marine spatial planning works. The more you know about how the ocean is used, and the more planning you can do in advance, the fewer conflicts there will be between uses. 
By taking into account physical features of the sea, like environmental characteristics, oil rigs, ports, MPAs, breeding grounds, as well as temporary uses like migration routes and shipping channels, decision makers can work to avoid conflicts. Coastal and marine spatial planning will be ecosystem-based, meaning planners will be able to manage human uses more efficiently while improving ecosystem health and services by recognizing the connections between the ocean environment and ocean uses. How will coastal and marine spatial planning work? What will have to be done for it to be implemented? In order to best manage the different uses of our oceans and coasts, it's first important to gather precise information on the ocean itself and on how it's being used. In order to do that, representatives of current ocean users, such as commercial and recreational fishermen, shipping companies, oil drillers, and recreational boaters will meet with government representatives to report on the ways they use the oceans. At the same time, scientists will work to take measurements and make maps of the ocean's physical attributes, including currents, depths, seafloor habitats, and animal populations. The Federal Program In July 2010, President Obama established a national policy for the stewardship of the ocean, our coasts, and the Great Lakes. In it, the President directs agencies to begin creating a framework for the implementation of coastal and marine spatial planning. The framework will create nine regional planning bodies to implement CMSP in different geographic regions of the country. Membership in these regional bodies will include federal, state, local, and tribal officials, non-government organizations, scientists, and the ocean users themselves. Together, those members will identify and map out current patterns of ocean use, gather information on physical ocean characteristics, and identify areas like permitting and licensing that can be streamlined by coastal marine spatial planning. State programs. Some states have already begun implementing coastal and marine spatial planning for the waters under their control, from the coastline to three miles out. State programs will likely look similar to the federal program, just on a more local level. Indeed, states and federal officials will work very closely together to ensure that plans are compatible. What won't coastal and marine spatial planning do? What are some common myths about CMSP? CMSP won't make certain parts of the ocean off-limits. CMSP is not ocean zoning. CMSP will itself not cause any parts of the ocean to become more restricted. If such new restricted areas are created under other laws or policies, marine spatial planning will simply ensure that these areas are cited so that they will have the least amount of impact on other ocean uses. CMSP won't cause much change to the day-to-day -day lives of ocean users. CMSP will be used primarily by government officials and organizations to help make decisions and fix problems. Though there may be some new uses occurring on the ocean, those currently using the sea, fishermen, boaters, shippers, etc., will not likely notice any changes to their existing permits or regulations. In fact, it's hoped that CMSP will eventually make the permitting and regulatory process less complicated than it is now. If implemented correctly, coastal and marine spatial planning will help us manage the growing uses of the oceans as smoothly as possible.